Hello, 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 Internet. Uh, I'm Chris, and I'm your Commander Mechanic. Thank you for joining me this afternoon, but I am not alone here. Uh, I want to uh, say hi to everybody out there. Uh, be sure to say hi in chat as well, uh, but say hi to my special guest, Charlotte Sable of the Commander Advisory Group, my good friend. Charlotte, how are you? Hello, I'm doing well. Uh, it's been a while. But yeah. I'm happy to be here, uh, especially it, it, since uh, you helped me with this deck in the first place. So, yeah, absolutely. It has been a while. You have been on the channel before. But not your first yes. On the channel, uh, we did a, a do a brew a while ago, and you've been part of our charity round tables. Yeah. Uh, so it is fantastic to have you back, and we're going to be doing something a little bit special today too. Um, yeah. I don't do too many live streams, but I think that this is a fantastic opportunity for us. Yeah. Uh, this is a very special deck that we're going to be talking about, but before we get into the deck, before we get into what we're doing, I want you to say hi to the audience and uh, introduce yourself to them as well. All right. Hi, audience. I am Charlotte. I am a magic judge, a member of the Commander Advisory Group, an occasional content creator. Um, I've been judging since 2009. I used to run the uh, Ask a Magic Judge Tumblr. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm around. I do stuff. You, most people have heard of me, I think. Uh, yeah, and I like... Them cards, they good. Uh, and I, I, I typically introduce you to people as one of the most brilliant rules-oriented minds that I have ever spoken well, thank to you. as well. You, you are my go-to when it comes to uh, rules interactions yeah. and, and checking to see if yeah. things work. So I always appreciate you for that. Um, yeah. But we're going to talk about something very, very special today, which is uh, very cool. Um, a while ago... You built this very cool budget DePaula pilot exemplar. Uh, yes. And uh, can, can you explain to everybody listening right now uh, what birthed this deck and uh, what, what was the inspiration? Sure. So I was invited to be on an episode of the Scrap Trawlers uh, streaming gameplay show hosted by lovely people. Uh, and so they're a budget commander stream. They uh, have, uh, they basically each month will choose at quasi random a theme, and then, then them and their guests will build to that theme. And when, for the month that I was on, it was to build a tribal theme deck. And I'd been interested in making a vehicle deck for a while. And so I decided that DePaulo was a good excuse to do both vehicle and dwarf tribal. So there we go. Fantastic, fantastic. So so we're yeah. the, the double whammy of tribal here, both yeah. dwarves and vehicles, which DePaula is a big fan of. She's basically made for this. Yeah. So it's a it's a very interesting uh, balance and compromise here. Dwarves like vehicles, vehicles like dwarves. Uh, but finding a balance within budget, yeah. too, uh, I think it's a confluence of deck building that I'm yeah. very interested in and very interested yeah. in running through. But yeah. uh, you put this deck together a year ago at this point, right? Uh, one second. I can see probably over a year now. Um, Mox Field will tell me if nothing else. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I mean, I very originally built it, uh, when, over a year ago. Uh, yeah, looks like I first started brewing it in March of last year. Wow. So, so, so quite a while ago, a year and a half ago at this point. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Although so, I believe we ended, I believe I didn't end up playing it on stream until June because there are some delays on the episode going to air but it was yeah but i mean the, the the deck first started being put together under the constraints in march so right on right on so i i mean when, when i talk tune up there are a yeah. few questions that i typically start off with um first of all 
Uh, if you played the deck as you have on stream, how did it play for you? It plays pretty smooth, usually. Um, for a budget deck, I'm very happy with how it plays. It's very straightforward as far as decks go. It's more straightforward than most of the decks I play, but um, I like it. I feel it's strong for its price point and can hang with more expensive decks if it needs to. Right on. Okay, okay. It's fun and aggressive, and like having card advantage in the command zone is always good. So, Absolutely. So uh, in this case, if, if the deck played well, if you were satisfied with its performance originally, why are we looking at it for a tune-up? Because there are... Let me see. Let me just count the pile of vehicles that have come out since I last updated. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I have 16 new vehicles that I'm considering for the deck, among other cards. But wow. yeah, and I'm currently running 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm currently running 14 vehicles. So there are more new vehicles than there are existing vehicles in the deck right, right now. Yeah, I, I mean, we, we have had kind of a uh, new renaissance when it comes to vehicles over the past yeah. year. Um, between yeah. uh, Neon Dynasty, New Capenna, and now with Dominaria, uh, yeah. it, there have been quite a few new vehicles released. So yeah. uh, is there anything that has been uh, piquing your interest in that regard from a vehicle standpoint? Uh, I don't know. There's just there's a lot of new options, which is nice because there's currently vehicles in the deck that aren't particularly great that I'm mostly just running because they're reasonably costed and statted vehicles, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I'd be happy to upgrade some of those. And then there's also just ones that just don't perform or aren't particularly suited for the deck as it exists. Any, any right. examples of that? Any under Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, Ether Sphere Harvester is fine. It can gain a bit of life, but it's like mediocre, right? It's a three power fire for three mana. It has crew one, which is nice, but it's also just kind of middle, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Raider's Carve is okay. It can get, it can ramp me a bit, but it's like Crew Three, which is expensive crew wise. Uh, Heart of Kieran's also Crew Three, and I don't, I run two Planeswalkers in the deck, and I'm not really like, you know, looking for that sort of thing. Um, Mizium Tanks, another card that's like it's good, but it's always sort of, it always feels on the edge of okay power level wise for the deck, right? So. Right. And then there's other ones that are, like, reasonable, but, you know, I, I mean, I wouldn't be sad to see the back end of Mobile Garrison, right? It's an okay card. I'm happy to play it, but I certainly wish would like to play better, right? Okay, okay. So so it sounds like some of, some of the uh, vehicles that you have in here from kind of vehicles first debut around the Kaladesh area uh, yeah. might, might be outdated at this point when we've seen the yeah. last year be very vehicle heavy mm -hmm. uh, so are there any examples of vehicles that are more recent uh, that, yeah. that you would be more interested in uh, hearing? Uh, oh yeah definitely like um like there's lots of cool thing cool new things like Imperial Recovery Unit is nice because it's recursion. Uh, Aerial Surveyor can ramp me, so that's probably a good straight-up replacement for Raider's Carve. Um... All right, all right. Uh, and chat, I have boosted my voice just a little bit. Let me know if that's a yeah. bit better. Uh, oh, sorry, how, is, how are my levels, by the way? Uh, on, on my end, fine. Chat, let me know if, uh, yeah. if everything's good between uh, Charlotte and I. I mean... Obviously, it's a vehicles deck, so I want to play Mech Titan Core, you know. Right, right. I can't not play that. Uh, Reckoner Bank Buster is just a great card. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, as far as these things go, uh, Nautiloid Ship is on the pricier side, but is still a cool card, vehicle-wise. Right, and, and we've seen some of these new vehicles be very value-heavy. 
right? Between mm-hmm. dealing damage when they enter or drawing you cards or recurring things, exiling graveyards. Uh, yeah. Basically, you can get utility on uh, vehicles now as opposed to static artifacts. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and exactly. and I, I think that that is is very interesting from a uh, for, from a deck building standpoint because this means that you can potentially cut uh, cards that were in the deck uh, for uh, for yeah. just value re- or not value reasons for utility reasons and replace yeah. them with vehicles that essentially do the same thing right yeah one of the examples that you've got in the deck right now that i like going to is cultivator's caravan yeah cultivator's caravan is a great three mana rock that adds mana of any color but is also a five five yeah right uh, and now you can get not just mana rocks but you can get the graveyard removal you can get the recursion mm-hmm. you can get all of the the great utility that you would typically yeah. include on a card that is just a static card in the deck that is now also yeah. oops a big attacker yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, so uh, the, there's a lot of new vehicles that have been released that are in this value category. I like uh, Mech Titan Core, Reckoner Bank Buster, some of these. But the challenge with some of these is that they aren't necessarily on the budget version. No. You, you mentioned like unlicensed curse. Nautil- right. <laughs> so so you, you had mentioned Nautiloid Ship, right? Nautiloid yeah. Ship, a mythic vehicle, which is fantastic. Uh, but U.S. dollar-wise is about four and a half bucks, right? Yeah. Four, four dollars, four and a half dollars, somewhere around there. Yeah. Right. Um, now we we talked about utility because it is ETB exile a graveyard, right? Yeah. That's that's fantastic utility. I always so it's not ETB. It's just tap exile up to two target cards from graveyard from so, a single graveyard. So so that's uh, that's unlicensed hearse. I'm, I'm talking not oh, sorry, the not a light ship. Yeah, yeah, my bad, my no, bad. No problem. But not a light ship is enter remove a graveyard. Uh, I'm always a big mm-hmm. advocate of colorless graveyard removal and everybody oh. having at least one or two ways to exile yeah. uh, graveyards. Right, because you know yeah. you're gonna get into a pod where there's the Marin deck, or somebody's doing mm-hmm. shenanigans where they're recurring stuff, uh, and having some kind of graveyard removal in red and white. White typically has a few ways to remove graveyards. Red doesn't, uh, but on on something that is also a five five evasive attacker sometimes that can get you free creature cards. Like that's fantastic utility. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, again, it's it's about four bucks. Unlicensed hearse, uh, which I was a big fan of, and let's go it's like fifteen now or something. Unlicensed hearse is yeah up over ten bucks. It's uh, you know twelve, yeah. thirteen, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think unfortunately that one's gonna have to like leave the consideration pile at this point. Exactly. Exactly. Now. Um, oh well. I'll find it a home somewhere else. What kind of budget are we working on? Uh, I would like to keep the total cost of the deck using cheapest options on Moxfield, where I have the deck list, at $50 or less. At 50 or less. So currently, without making uh, too many recent changes to it, you're sitting just below $50. You're sitting at about 42 right now. Yeah. Which, well, then, I mean, that's seven dollars. That's a reasonable amount. It, it gives you some room for flex, which is pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. Now, yeah. I, I, I see that uh, you ha- might have made one or two changes to the list recently. I see Moon Silver Key in here. Um, uh, the most recent actual changes I made. Um, yeah. What is? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I added uh, Moon Silver Key. I added Roadside Reliquary, Mech Hanger, right, uh, right, and Secluded Courtyard. Fantastic, since fantastic. Then I haven't updated it since. Uh, yeah, since basically uh, not Crimson Vow. What was the one before Midnight Hunt? Right. Yeah. 
Excellent, excellent. And, and some of those additions, I think, Roadside Reliquary uh, is fantastic. I mean, it's a land that essentially can cycle for a card or maybe two. Um, and a reasonable number of enchantments. I have six about six in the list. Yeah. Currently, so. yeah, which which is decent, absolutely. And mech hanger. Like yeah. uh, me- mech hanger is a great way to crew your vehicles on an empty board, too. Uh, say you get hit by a board wipe, mech hanger ensures that you're still swinging with some of your vehicles. Uh, so I, I think those are fantastic includes, right? Excellent additions. Uh, but uh, are we looking to, and yeah, as, as Philippe is saying in chat, Moon Silver Key is bay. Uh, yeah. I, I agree. I mean, three mana to at very least uh, tutor up a soul ring is pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, but as we mentioned, uh, Cultivator's Caravan is a yeah. mana ability. So you can yeah. tutor up a 5-5 five, five body <coughs> to the field, which is pretty good, right? Uh, so Moon Silver Key, definitely a decent add in here. Um, and looking at the spells, we're light on spells, we're heavier on dwarves and artifacts. I think that that makes sense, right? Creatures and artifacts take up the majority of the list. Uh, but uh, what... Uh, kind of changes are you looking to make from a, a card quality standpoint? Is there anything in here that you feel underperformed while playing? Uh, let me see. Um, yeah, there's some creatures and such that I'm not super happy with. Uh, like ones that I've tried but didn't sort of work out. Where mm-hmm. did they go? Uh, like oh, Elibu and- Ancient <laughs> Witness is a cool card for the deck in theory, but not really in practice. Right. Uh, and similarly on the dwarf side, uh, Hoffrey Ghost Forge is also cool and a dwarf, but not really on theme with what we're doing. And those are both five drops, so... Right, so they're they're the higher end of your curve, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I, I agree that Hoffrey is one of those uh, creatures that gets better to the better synergies you have in the deck yeah. with it. And I think that when it comes to graveyard shenanigans and sacrifice effects, you really don't have uh, a lot of the synergies there that make the best use yeah. out of him. Sure, he's a lord for your dwarves, or sorry, a lord for mm-hmm. spirits, um, and doing something like getting a vehicle back from the grave that's a spirit that's got plus one, plus one trample and haste uh, mm-hmm. is is pretty okay. But the uh, the challenge is that you don't have ways to sacrifice them unless they're dying in combat. Right. Right. Uh, and then there's, then there's a couple cards that are like just not pulling their weight value wise. Like Stormkiln Artist is a great card and it can be relatively beefy in this deck, but I don't have that many instants and sorceries, so it's not going to make me a lot of treasures. Right. And with its current price point at like three, almost four dollars, that probably can be replaced. Right. So. Yeah, uh, considering from an instance and sorcery standpoint, you've got 12 altogether, six of each. Yeah. Uh, he's yeah. likely not going to be making you more than one or two treasures a yeah. game. I mean, you know, chances are I play him and he's like five or six power, but that's still not really worth that much money. Like, that's not worth, you know, almost 10% of my deck value. Right? Exactly, like, exactly. I think that that's a, a fantastic point. So uh, w- with some of that being said, let's say we axe Alibu and Hoffrey right out the gate. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to be updating it from my end. I've got a copy of your deck list yep. here, so I'm going to be making changes to it live. Um, yep. And uh, let's say we get rid of Stormkiln Artist as well and some of the yep. other vehicles that we talked about. Let's get rid of Mizium Tank, uh, Aethersphere, Aethersphere Harvester, Heart of Kirin, uh yep. Mobile Garrison. Mobile Garrison. Is or, I don't know. Mobile Garrison is like, it's it's a decent vehicle. It, it It's better than it looks, but it's also not, you know, amazing. Right. Uh, untapping another uh, artifact or creature means that you can untap the creature that crewed it, essentially, yeah. or one of your other attacking vehicles. Yeah. But do we have a way to abuse that? Are there synergies for that? Not really. It's just, it's just reasonable right 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 yeah i mean um, it, it's... in terms of other vehicles uh Aradara express is probably over at this point vehicle wise 
Yeah, and we had mentioned it's, that it's five mana and a crew four. It's eight six mana, which is nice, but that's still just not super great, right? Well, crew four also means that on yeah. average, two of your dwarfs Probably. have to tap to yeah, crew it. Exactly. Uh, so right. um, we 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 had spoken briefly or touched on very briefly uh, the way that design has shifted regarding vehicles between mm -hmm. Kaladesh uh, and now. Right yeah. um, here, we see Aradar Express, a common vehicle that is just a body. Right, it's an eight-six yeah. menace crew four. Where yeah. now a lot of the vehicles that are coming out are utility on vehicles. Yeah. They they might not be as massive bodies as Aradar Express or uh, the runaway train one. Yeah. Um, but they're they're still. Uh, Th those still hold up as threats. Uh, Untethered Express yeah. is the other one. Yeah. So, so those are good bodies and good attackers. But when we look at something like Unlicensed Hearse, or we look at whether like yeah. Corrupted, uh, there's I think better value for what you're getting at these different levels. Yeah. I mean, the one upside to Untethered Express is it's only Crew One, which is yes, really solid. Right. Um, but yeah, but like even just comparing common to common, like. For a couple more mana now, we can get Thundersteel Colossus, which is 7-7 seven, seven, Trample Haste Crew 2, right? Which is seems like an improvement all around, except for the mana cost, right? Right, uh, and that is uh, sort of the Thundersteel. Thundersteel. Yeah, uh, yeah this is the, uh, the mecha uh, <laughs> from... Uh, Neon Dynasty, a 7-7 seven, seven Trample yeah. Haste for 7 with a Crew 2. That The Crew 2 is one of your dwarves versus the Crew 4, which is on average going to be two of your dwarves. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, there there definitely is a uh, a discrepancy there power-wise, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and not only that, but something like Thundersteel Colossus is a whole 5 cents, too. Yeah. Uh, so you can, you can be getting, on a budget, these really value beaters. Uh, in the list, yeah. as well as the uh, the utility mm -hmm. that you can get on yeah. vehicles. It's one of the or, reasons why or, I like vehicles so much. Yeah, or even just as another good comparison, like if we want to if we want to like keep same cost, same crew ish. Ardar Express compared to Surge Hacker Mech, five mm -hmm. five menace, still crew four, one cheaper. ETB deals damage equal to twice the number of vehicles to target creature or planeswalker. Mm -hmm. Right, so. Yeah, That's the a removal spell now. Exactly, exactly. The utility of now having a removal spell on a vehicle body, in addition to being a five-five menace, is fantastic. Right? The, yeah. This at least does something when it enters the battlefield. And I know that a lot of people are like, hey, if it doesn't do something the turn that you cast it, it's useless. I think that that's a very toxic viewpoint of the way that cards are. Sometimes cards can just be fun and good. Yeah. Uh, if you want to play an Aradar Express, play an Aradar Express. But Surge Hacker Mech can t also take one of the removal slots that you would dedicate to yeah. a, a dedicated spell in your deck. If you want to pare down those 12 instants or sorceries that you have yeah. even further, adding in a Surge Hacker mech, which is 11 right. cents, is a, yeah. a great way to uh, cut mm -hmm. from those spells and add in absolutely. another vehicle. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and in general, just again, with Dipala, we want to increase our density of dwarves and vehicles. Yes. So that we get more value when we use her trigger, right? So. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, I mean, for, for those that might not be familiar, and we have good friend of the channel Muffins on a Hill in chat who says that uh, they have never seen a Dipala deck before. Yeah. So I, I just want to recap what Dipala does before we okay. get too much further, because we are sure. talking about the value of Dipala right now. So also Dipala... Another reason to be updating it now is there's this sweet new secret layer art by Wayne Reynolds. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and you mentioned that you have uh, have a, a version of that. So uh, yeah. very cool to put you know art and cards that you like at the head of a deck too. Uh, so Depaula for for anybody that hasn't seen Depaula before, hasn't played with Depaula before. Depaula is a three three for three in the Boros color identity. Uh, she is a lord for dwarves as well as a lord for vehicles if they're creatures. Okay, so once a vehicle is crewed, it gets plus one, plus one. But then also, when Depaula becomes tapped, not necessarily attacking, so if she's crewing a vehicle, you can pay X, and if you do, you reveal the top X cards of your library and put all dwarf and vehicle cards from among them into your hand. 
So this is a, a great way to use extra mana. If you're not going to be heavy on instants, you're either going to be casting everything on your turn and having two or three extra mana available as well. This is a great way to try and grab two or three extra cards off of the top yeah. of your library. And for in red and white, where you don't get a lot of that, where you don't get a lot of the uh, card ad advantage, uh, having the, it in the command zone is a fantastic utility. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So, uh, I mean, what, what we want to be doing here is ideally having a vehicle out before DePaula comes down and then mm -hmm. having DePaula crew a vehicle yeah. right away. Uh, I, yeah. Like, that's a, a great and, way to and, get more value. Even ideally, it would be nice to have at least one extra mana when DePaula comes down so that you can at least get some value and maybe draw a card off of her, even if, like, she eats a removal spell. Right, right, and I mean, you're you're pumping your other dwarves. The vehicle that you end up crewing and attacking with is a little bit bigger, so there there are a lot of really cool ways to say drop a two or three drop vehicle, and then on turn four drop the Paula, crew the vehicle, attack with it, and pay a mana into the Paula, and potentially draw a card. So. So that means maybe we want to prioritize vehicles at two and three mana. Yeah. To to see what we can do here. So I'm gonna do a quick little advanced search in Moxfield. Uh, All right, uh, Vehicle. Uh, and let's new ones by. Us. Is. Come on, let's go equals three first. Uh, Search. All right. All right. Well, I can go through what I have in my piles if you want. Uh, sure. Uh, I, I've got a few up here right now, and we can go through a couple of them and just see yep. uh, how we feel about a few of them. But uh, here's my view for all of our good friends in chat. Yep. Um, we, we had mentioned Aerial Surveyor off the top. Yeah. Right? right. Yeah. Three mana, three, four, flying crew two. That on its own would be great, but this is also, uh, when it, it attacks, if the defending player controls more land than you, you get to tutor a planes card onto the battlefield. Yeah. Seems like a solid include right off the bat. Uh, less than a dollar as well, which is pretty stellar. Yep. Right? For a budget deck, I think that it's a shoe in uh, yeah. Then we've got a, a common Brute Suit. Brute Suit's a 4-3 yeah. Vigilance Crew 1. Right? Not yep. the additional utility that we were talking about, but it's it's a decent body. Yep. However, if DePaul is out, better. it's a it's a five four, which is okay. But your dwarves might be that big as well. Yeah. So I, I that's, a, that's that's a solid. Maybe you can probably do better at this point. We're probably looking for something in addition to a body. Yes, exactly. We're looking for some kind of utility, something new. Yeah. Uh, or or evasion. For instance, we've got Dragonfly yeah. Suit, which is three mana, three two I flying miss crew. Dragonfly one. Suit. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I wasn't interested in that one off the bat, but uh, it's not exciting, and I'll agree with you there. It's not uh, thrilling. It's not turning any heads. Uh, but evasion on your vehicles is yeah. plus plus good. Right, but if again, if we're looking for that, I'd probably just rather go with like the high-speed hover bike, right? I think that one that's... less power for the same cost, uh, but it has flash and ETB tap a creature. So, and uh, we'll we'll look at that one in a moment too. Yeah. But I think that that's a, a fantastic uh, call out for that. Um, now uh, we also have a, another interesting one in getaway car. So Getaway Car is a 3-mana 4-3 haste, and when it attacks or blocks, you can bounce a creature that crewed it to its owner's hand. Do we have anything that you want to reuse value from? Is there any way that we can uh, exploit that in this deck? There's not a ton of ETBs. I mean, there's uh, Dwergar Hedge Mage. Uh, there's Plundering Barbarian... Just in what's already in the deck. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Priest of Ancient Lore. Uh, veteran Motorist. Fairgrounds Warden. Uh, 
that's about it for current value. Um, in cards I'm considering, where did my creatures I'm considering go? Now, let uh, me there's... let me propose this real quick. Uh, that's yeah. just your ETBs on your creatures. What yeah. about ETBs on your vehicles? Because you could yeah. crew your vehicle, use the vehicle to crew this, and then bounce the vehicle yeah. back to your hand? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. something um, like uh, reusing yeah. Surge Hacker mech that we talked about. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, also, in cards I'm probably going to put in, there's Insufferable Bard, which has ETB. Uh, target creature opponent controls can't lock this turn and is goaded. Insufferable Bard. Balladeer, sorry. Balladeer, there we go. Uh, yes, two mana for a 2 1. Pretty decent, pretty decent. Uh, and I, I love goad, uh, which yeah. is great. And removing a blocker is fantastic. I mean, yeah. that's that's pretty decent utility to uh, use over and over again. At mm-hmm. very least, it takes the biggest problem uh, on the board off of your hands yeah. almost permanently. Yeah. Okay. It, pretty all right. Yeah. Pretty decent. I, I don't not like it. But uh, again, yeah. I, I think that it's a solid maybe because we need to uh, yeah. determine how many of these kind of reusable effects we end up with in the yeah. deck. Exactly. The car is a maybe, yeah. Uh, Mech Titan Core, I think, is a, is an absolute yes, because, I mean, we're a vehicle deck. We want vehicles. So, yeah, I, I think uh, Mech Titan Core is one of those fun ones. Uh, yeah. But uh, also in this deck in particular, with the volume of creatures that you have, mm-hmm. as well as the, uh, the volume of... Uh, the volume of vehicles you have, popping off with Mech Titan Core is mm-hmm. entirely possible, and and that's that's one of those achievement uh, achievement unlocked cards yeah. that that I love very much. Uh, where uh, hey, I, I made the Mech Titan token this game. It doesn't matter whether mm-hmm. I win or lose. I have made the yeah. Mech Titan. <laughs> Mech Titan get yeah. Uh, and for those that haven't seen the Mech Titan before. Uh, <laughs> I've got the token up on screen right now. Should have it somewhere in here. It's so freaking yeah. cool. Yeah, it's, it's a good. It's an all color ten ten with flying vigilance trampled lifelink and haste. Yeah. Like this is this is one of those like I I've uh, gotten merit wage out in this game. It doesn't matter whether I win or lose. It doesn't matter whether you swords to plowshare right now. I've yeah. done what I wanted to do. Getting the yeah. mech titan out. It's one of those. Okay. <laughs> You can wrath right away. I don't care. I've made the Mech Titan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so those are the kind of fun things that kind of... Uh, and and I, I mentioned this on, on Twitter not too long ago, um, but it's one of the, um, the uh, success conditions, not necessarily victory conditions, yeah. right? Yeah. Not everything has to be a win condition. Sometimes you can succeed in Commander without winning. And something like Mech Titan or assembling Cauldra or getting um, getting Merit Lage out, those are success conditions. Uh, and uh, having that in this list, I think, is is fantastic. It's uh, another fun angle for this. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's jump back over to our uh, our view here. Um, so looking at some of the other three mana vehicles we have, we have Imperial Recovery Unit. And you, uh, yeah. you had mentioned this earlier as well. Yes. This is a really interesting one uh, because it can rebuy uh, creatures or vehicles with mana value two or less from your graveyard. Yeah. And that's important because the majority of your dwarves are two mana or less. Seven dwarves. And all, all seven of them in the list are two mana or less. I think that this one's a pretty big shoe in as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. It, it, it means a lot for the longevity of the deck, too. Yeah. Okay? It's also a great way to recover. Also just has cool art. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's a great way to recover from a Wrath, too. Yeah. Okay? But yeah, I mean, even in addition to Seven Dwarves, just in current creatures, one, two, three, four, five... Five other creatures plus the seven doors, so that's twelve creatures it can get, and then vehicles. Like we're already looking at the cheap ones anyway. Mm-hmm. There's like, yeah. Right. Now, um, 
we we had spoken about uh, vehicles with four crew cost uh, and how yeah. maybe it wasn't worth it at Aradar yeah. Express's level, but we have a new one from Battle for Baldur's Gate in Mighty Servant of Luko. Yes. This is a three mana, six, six trample ward discard a card. Yeah. It also says if it was if it becomes crewed for the first time each turn, if it was crewed by exactly two creatures, it gains when this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw two cards. That's pretty good value. Yeah, absolutely. And, and considering at four, you're likely having to yeah. crew it with two creatures, exactly yeah. two creatures. Uh, granted, yeah. uh, DePaula can crew it on her... Well, she, she'll need a hand with it because she's going to yeah. be a 3-3. Three, three. I think that, that this one is card advantage in yeah. red and white. It protects itself with ward of discard yeah. a card, and it has trample. This one, in my opinion, is a shoe in in this deck. Yeah, it, absolutely. It's forty five cents as well, yep. and can be drawing you two cards a turn, hundred percent in. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, uh, on that similar value thing, weatherlight completed seems good, just as like uh, when a creature dies, scry one or draw a card. Although, again, that is on the pricier side, so maybe. Let's look at it later. I don't know. If we've got room in the budget later, I think yeah. so. It's it's a yeah. little over five dollars right now. It's just about six bucks. But it is one of those uh accrued value creatures. Yeah. Uh or, yeah. or vehicles. I I also want to recommend uh something that we could potentially be using Weather Light to uh activate it before it hits that condition on it too but yeah. we'll get to that once we're done looking at some of yeah, these vehicles absolutely I, I think that it's a good if we've got room for this yes yeah uh, uh reckoner bank buster on the other hand absolutely needs to go in so that's another card advantage thing uh yeah. plus it makes a pilot plus it then leaves a reasonable vehicle behind yes so uh, i i it, it's going to make you more bodies which is great yeah it's it's a two mana four four at the very least Right, but if you start activating it, it is one of those draw cards, and then start yeah. making treasure tokens and bodies. It, it's exactly. fantastic. I think that it is stellar. It, it's a buck fifty, meaning it's solidly within budget yep. still, and I think that it does deserve a spot. Uh, but yep. you can see how much just across three or four cards, we've significantly upped the card advantage portion of this deck. Yeah via vehicles that have been released in the past year. I think that that's very interesting, and I think that that's an interesting way to take uh, vehicle design moving forward, is these vehicles need to do something when they're not crewed. Do you feel that that's like a good design uh, move? Something like that, yeah. I mean, I, I'd like vehicles to be more than just bodies for combat. Uh, speaking of which, I was looking at the other vehicles already in the deck, and the only ones that are basically just attacking bodies that we have left are the Renegade Freighter and the Untethered Express. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know if we want to pull them right away, but we still have a lot of vehicles to go through, so I'm feel thinking we can probably upgrade them. Uh, and with some of the uh, with, with some of the new design around vehicles, I think there's a yeah. solid opportunity for us to find something that is not only an attacking body but does something else too. Yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna pull those. Right okay. uh, now, uh, interestingly, I don't know how much you've reviewed them yet, but Warhammer 40k has added has quite a, number. a few new yeah. vehicles too. Yeah, so, I haven't really considered them yet. I'm waiting to see where prices uh, settle because right now, like every card in that set is like high in cost just because of what it is, at yes. least from the prices I've looked at. So I'm waiting to see if they actually set at all settle into, you know, a reasonable value for the deck. So. Absolutely, uh, and I'm I know that there's some good things in there, but again, I'm waiting. For the moment, yeah, uh, I, I'm looking at seven new vehicles 
in here that are all pretty interesting. Uh, I did a yeah. uh, video on the channel not uh, too long ago, just yeah. a couple of days ago, uh, shouting out the new vehicles in the set because they yeah. do some really cool things. Yeah. Uh, gra um, granted, like you said, uh, pricing is a little wonky right now. I can see that some of them are a couple of dollars. I can see that some of them are a couple of cents right now. And finding out where they're going to fall is uh, going to be an important part of building a budget deck. But something like Ghost Arc for instance, which is a 4-mana 3-3 three, three flying crew 2, has, when it becomes crewed, each artifact creature in your graveyard gains unearth 3 until end of turn. Yeah. You aren't running a lot no, of uh, artifact creatures. Right? I think I am, actually. I, think I actually have that many artifact creatures. I have artifacts and I have creatures, and the vehicles become artifact creatures, but I don't think I run any actual artifact creatures in the deck. Right. Well, it, it's going to be hard to find an artifact creature dwarf right <laughs> yeah exactly uh and in terms of attacking bodies there's something like goliath truck as well uh which is a four four for four with crew two but when it attacks you put two plus one plus one counters on another target attacking creature so yeah. it's something that can make say your evasive vehicles bigger and bigger and bigger too uh, i i think that there's some interesting utility it, from the set that's to be explored but yeah right now i think for this we definitely have to wait for those prices to settle yeah exactly because again they said that they can reprint the decks well at least the regular version so hopefully that'll keep the prices low obviously foil versions are going to be stupid but yeah we're worried about base cost here not yeah okay so let's see so there's, uh, in terms of uh, vehicles, I, I think that there's still a few that we can talk about, but uh, one of the non-dwarf creatures I wanted to talk about, and I wanted to make a specific point of this, is Astor, Bearer of Blades. Okay. So Astor... Oh, yeah. He... Yeah, okay. uh, Astor, Bearer of Blades from uh, Dominaria United is a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four human warrior, not a dwarf. Yeah. When he enters the battlefield, you look at the top seven cards of your library and you can reveal an equipment or vehicle card and put it into your hand. So he's card advantage right away. You're definitely going to have the concentration of vehicles in the deck where he's going to nab you a vehicle. But he's got the yeah. important line that vehicles you control have crew one. Yeah, that seems super solid. Yeah, all right. I, oh yeah, I think I ordered one of him. I think I have one of him in the mail. Uh, yeah, sorry, I had to look at what the uh, showcase art was, because that's right. the only version of the legendaries I've been ordering. Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I have one of those in the mail, so yeah, we can definitely slot him in, and he's worth all of, like, 25 cents. Exactly, he's, like, 20 cents right now. He yeah. semi-tutors up a vehicle for you, and yeah. the fact that he then makes it so that anything can crew anything... Yeah, at a at a one to one rate, one creature can crew one vehicle at a time, yeah. is I, I think fantastic, pretty pretty excellent. Yeah, sounds good. Need to just find a random card to slot him to proxy. Uh, now this one's going to be a little bit of a controversial take too, but there is a commander legal card out of Unfinity called. Yeah. Captain Rex Nebula. Yeah, I was looking at him. <laughs> looking at him. He seems fun. Yeah, uh, so so this one uh, is, uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, a non-land permanent you control becomes a vehicle artifact until end of turn. It doesn't matter whether it's already a vehicle artifact or not. Yeah. So, But you can turn a creature into a uh, an artifact vehicle and crew it, which yeah. is pretty interesting. But it's it's base power and toughness are equal to its mana val value, and it has crew two, as yeah. well as this really interesting crash land ability, which is when it deals damage, roll a six sided die. Uh, yeah. The if the result is equal to the mana value, it deals that much damage to any target, and then you sacrifice it. So you're essentially yeah. you you've got the ability to throw your vehicles around for some additional reach. Mm hmm. Uh, and not only your vehicles, but your other non-land permanents, too. You can yeah. crew... You can make a creature a vehicle and crew it. 
right? You can make your enchantment a vehicle and crew it. Yeah. I think he's got a lot of potential and some potential to yeah. get in those final few points if it means taking somebody yeah. out. Uh, yeah. Right right now he's sitting around $3. But, yeah, again, the prices on that settle. Yes. Settle again. It depends. Honestly, like, unsets usually have had not very expensive cards in them, but, again, this is the first one with, like, eternal legal stuff, so we yes. shall see. Yeah, uh, and I, I think that that is, that is the point here, that uh, yeah. it is the ability to play these in commander the fact that they are now eternal legal going to be driving them up to the point where they're going to be untenable to include in budget brews because we also have C clown car in the set too uh which is another thing entirely but C clown car is an x mana cost one one crew two vehicle when it enters the battlefield you roll x six-sided die and for each uh, odd result you make clown robots <laughs> yeah and for each even result you put a plus one plus one counter on it um I again this we heard about that one just in terms of like stupid judge scenarios with <laughs> unbounded amounts of mana yes <laughs> uh, do you get a slow play warning for counting your odd and even results <laughs> <laughs> well you're yeah uh it's stupid and also just like okay so yeah so if i cast this and i have unbounded mana and i can give my everything haste and my opponent has a soul warden yada 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 <laughs> right <laughs> oh the scenarios that judges get into yeah uh, I'll, again these i'll think on later for now i just want cards that are actually released yes makes sense um makes sense. Yeah, we've we've got a few. Uh, how, how about uh, Golden Argosy? This is another yeah, one from Dominari one. United. Yeah, I have one of those in the mail as well. Um, that's interesting, but again, I don't know if. I feel like effect-wise, it's just a different version of Getaway Car, mm -hmm. right? Um, I mean, it has a bigger butt, but it also doesn't have haste, and it's one more mana and one less power. Mm -hmm. so it's like, eh, I'm not super thrilled on it, but I mean, I'll think about it and see. But I think, I think I'd want to try Getaway Car first and see if that style of effect is good in the deck, and then... But again, this also might be good. I, again, I'll need to see you know, on stuff. But I mean, crew one vehicles should never be underestimated in general. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and uh, just the the ability to blink something like a surge hacker mech every turn or a Durgar mm -hmm. uh, every turn to yeah. get the destroy yeah. effect. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Speaking of, we should probably just put surge hacker mech right in there. Yeah, I, I've got surge hacker mech in the list, which is yeah. great. Uh, yeah. Uh, did you put Astor in the list? Yes. And Bankbuster and Luke. I'm keeping the adds and removes separate for now, just until we. And, and I can send you the updated list yeah. uh, when we're done yeah. too. Yeah, I'm keeping track on myself as well, but good to make sure that they're the same. Perfect. All right. Cool. So, um, should we look at? I think we've talked about all the two and three, other than. Weather like completed, which again we were waiting on budget at the end, right? Mm -hmm. For that one. Now, uh, so something that, that I, I did want to ask as well with just the swaps that we've made here, uh, we've brought the the average mana value of the deck down by yeah. uh, point four. So we went from three point four down to three point oh eight right now. Nice. Uh, which is pretty decent. Did you find when you played the deck that the 33 lands, 35 including MDFCs, was sufficient? Yes, it was. Okay. We've um, also added okay. some also, some more card advantage into the list. different card counts, so I think you maybe don't have everything out that I've cut. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I cut the Renegade Freighter and the Untethered Express. Okay, I did not cut those yet. Um, uh, oh, here, I'll show you 
what I have. So Hoffrey, Alibu, and Stormkiln Artist, creature wise. Mm -hmm. Uh Mobile Garrison, Mizium Tank, Heart of Kirin, Ether Sphere Harvester, Ardar Express, Raider's Carve, Untethered Express, and Renegade Freighter. Okay. And Raider's Carve is that okay. So uh from what I see we've got room for four more cards. Okay. Uh yeah. Now okay. we we haven't added um, in that's uh, interesting because my my list is showing me ninety. So okay, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five, eleven. Oh wait, sorry, I haven't added any of these in yet, other than Aster. Uh yeah. So but he's in. Now we we wanted to add in a couple of the new dwarves too. So I yeah. I want to do and then I want to make maybe see about making other swaps too. So yeah. yeah. So I, I'm doing a quick search here for dwarves, and specifically dwarves that we don't have in the deck yet, and might be yeah. new. Because I, when you and I originally discussed this list a year or so ago, yeah. um, we, we had gone over the existing dwarves. What's worth including, yeah. what's not worth including. Um, but since then, we've had another D&D &D set, for instance. Uh, so we have that something... in that one. Yeah. Uh, like... Uh, Amber Grizzle O'Mall, four mana, three three haste, dwarf cleric. When she attacks, you may discard your hand. If you do draw a card for each player being attacked, maybe, but I'm not a hundred percent. I mean, it's a four drop that's kind of expensive for the deck. I'm not super sold on that, and I get card advantage from my commander, so I don't know that I necessarily need a card like that. Perfectly, perfectly reasonable. Um, she also doesn't synergize with Depaula since Depaula is on yeah. tap, and she's yeah. on attack. Yeah, exactly. So you would be yeah. getting the additional cards from Depaula and then immediately discarding yeah. them to Amber. So I agree that there's a lack of synergy there. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, the, the. This is one that we talked about offline, but Cadric Soul Kindler. Uh, from the Dominar well, United. Maybe what I'm about in this deck, he's cool, but um, I don't have that many legendaries. And again, he's basically the Hoffrey problem mm -hmm. again. It's you know, a cool card that doesn't quite synergize. I agree entirely. I, I think that it's really cool to do something like ignoring the legend rule. That's one of my favorite things to do. I know that yeah. others might not agree, <laughs> but uh, I really like it. Uh, and the fact that you can make additional copies of your legendary permanents, I think, is is cool. But it's one of those effects that require a deck around it. It requires specific yeah. deck building conceits, and mm -hmm. we are already full of that in this deck. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, uh -huh. Let's... Yeah, the two dwarves I had put aside for potential inclusion are the Insufferable Balladeer and the Hammers of Moradin. Ooh, the Hammers of Moradin. So I, I, I'm going to pull that one up uh, right now. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, Hammers of Moradin. So Hammers of Moradin is a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three with Myriad. Uh, if yeah. uh, somebody has never played with Myriad, it means when you attack with it, you make a copy of it for each other opponent mm -hmm. so in this case if you've got three opponents you attack one person with it you get two free copies of it but it also says when it attacks for each opponent tap up to one target creature that player controls this is a great way to break through board stalls yeah i mean and it's weird in that it's a dwarf that wants that i want to be attacking with rather than crewing a vehicle but mm -hmm. like you know, I'm not always going to have more vehicles than dwarves, so... Yeah, well, and I mean, there there's something to be said about having a 3-3 three, three attacker at each opponent versus yeah. one 4-3 attacker that you send at yeah, one exactly. person. Yeah, I think this is worth a try at the very least. Yep. I, I, I also think that it's worth it for the ability to tap down, say, an yeah, opponent to flying good. blocker. It's yeah, exactly. And then, you know, beep beep in with weather light or exactly. weather light completed or Yeah, I I think that yeah. it's a fantastic utility. And we talked about the insufferable balladeer a bit too. Yeah. Uh being able to goad things means uh mm -hmm. getting the biggest threat on the table off of your back. And yeah. we looked at some of the potential ways to reuse him too. 
uh, whether it be yeah. from uh, Getaway Car or Golden Argosy, both are in the maybe yeah. list right now. But at base, yeah. he's a two power dwarf. Uh, yeah. With uh, with our commander out, a three power dwarf. That's yeah, crewing. I mean, things. I already have at least seven two mana two power dwarves, so it's like yeah. Eh, but his trigger is quite good. Yes. But I, again, I, I think he's I think he's a maybe for the moment. Okay. I think it's like let's wait and see where we're at in terms of swaps. Right. Makes sense. Now I uh, I do have a couple of non dwarf creatures that I'm considering for the deck though. Okay, hit me with it. I will pull them uh, up. One of them that I very much want to include is uh, Kitsune Ace. Uh, so this is the 2-mana two 2-2. Two, two. Whenever a vehicle you control attacks, choose one. That vehicle gains first strike until end of turn, or you untap the ace. Uh, that untap... The, the, sorry, the, the first strike ability... Yeah. Uh, is so incredible. Good. Like, that's so yeah. good. So I, I think that's an auto-add, honestly. Yeah, considering the yeah. ace doesn't have to crew the vehicle for it to get first strike. Yeah, it's I think, any vehicle. Yes. Yeah. I, I think that that's a stellar yeah. shout out right there. Uh, the other one I was thinking of is Leon and Abunas, which gives artifacts I control hexproof, which is nice, but it's also four mana and only two power, and it's like eh, maybe. But again, I you know kind of want to keep the the curve down. You, yeah, and and I think uh, when you start getting up into four plus mana, you want those to be your vehicles in this list or you want it to be such great value like yeah. Jorkadine that it comes down and oh, yeah. it's a threat yeah um now question for you since i don't think i had it in the original list what are your thoughts on loyal unicorn uh so loyal unicorn is okay the, the one concern with it is that uh you have to crew your vehicles before combat yeah so in order for your yeah. vehicles to have vigilance, you have to crew them in your main yeah. phase. Yeah, okay. Do you think maybe we should put it in the cup pile for now and can always put it back at the end? Uh, or... It's it's your deck, it's your call. I think that there I is know, some what do you think? If it was your choice. <laughs> uh, I, I, think th I think we still have so many good vehicles to add in that it probably is worth considering as a cut. Yes, uh, I... Yeah. Uh, I, from what I'm seeing at the list right now, we're at 25 creatures to 20 artifacts right now. Yeah. And keeping yeah, so that balance one to one yeah. would be pretty decent. So cutting a creature to make room for yeah. more vehicles, I think is perfectly fine. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, right. So, yeah. Abunus and Balladeer are maybe still. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the four mana plus vehicles. Sure. We didn't talk about those yet. Um, I think Brute Suit we're saying is a no just because it's just a body, right? Uh, I am going to uh, do a Scryfall search right here so that we can go through some of the four plus mana uh, yeah. vehicles. Uh, yeah. So let's see. Um, I'm gonna say brute suits and no. Same with honeymoon hearse because it's just the body. Uh, not a Lloyd ship is of these is the one I'm most interested in. I I agree. How how about this for a pitch? Uh, have you heard of horde hauler? Yeah. Horde horde hauler is a yeah. four mana five five trampler. When it deals Oof, combat damage yeah. to a player, you create a treasure like, token for each artifact they control. Like, I heard, I heard you like Dockside. Yeah, <laughs> uh, here, here is uh, the the Dockside, Dockside as home. a car. <laughs> yeah, Dockside at home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's a it's a good way for you to continue your mana value engine, uh, as well as giving you mana to pump into your commander down the road mm -hmm. too. Um, and also, having more treasures synergizes with Magda. Yes. Although I don't really run, she can switch. Can she search? Yeah, she can search artifacts. So yeah, yeah. I don't have any dragons, but she can search artifacts. So that's good. Yeah, horde hauler seems good. Seems like a worth an include. Yeah, and considering at crew three, that's still yeah. one of your dwarves more often yeah. than not. Exactly. It's it's still Depala at yes. the very least. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So I I like horde yeah. hauler there a lot. Yeah. 
Um, now, uh, again, nautiloid ship, provided we have the budget for it, I think is yeah. a great ad because what uh, is the price on nautiloid ship at the moment? Three fifty. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Be being able to uh, nab creatures out of your opponent's graveyards yeah. is yeah. huge here too. Mm -hmm. It's that utility. It's that free graveyard removal utility. But being able to nab creatures out of your opponent's exile, the, the exiled cards is fantastic because you start getting, you know, uh, the the titans that they might have discarded or yeah. the big dragons or demons or angels or whatever they, mm -hmm. they've discarded because they can't cast them early game for whatever yeah. reason. Um, and now you can get them back and you can get them for basically free. Okay. Um what are your thoughts on Mysterious Limousine? Uh, so, uh, I, I am a, a little uh, conflicted on it. Okay. Um, five mana for a 4-4 four, four crew 2 is below rate for a vehicle on its own. Right, but it's also just a removal spell. Yes. Right. I mean, it's an O-ring, basically. Exactly. It's an O-ring that can attack. But the problem yeah. with that is that it's an O-ring that can attack. Yeah. Is because if you've exiled something of yeah. uh, significant import underneath mm -hmm. it, you no longer want to attack with it because you yeah. don't want to risk it being destroyed. Okay, yeah, that's fair. So we'll give that maybe a pass for now. Um, all right, so let's see. So that's it for vehicles. Uh, I currently have two free sleeves, which seems right. Is that matching up with your math at the moment? Uh, yes, I, I've put Insufferable Balladeer in the list, and okay. I'm at 99 okay. cards, so technically we're okay. at 98. Okay, well, let's put the Balladeer. It seems good, but I'm always wary about two drops, because I have, like, that one chunk of seven two drops, right? Yes, so. yeah, the, the seven dwarves in, are in here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, I think that there's, uh, there's definitely some... Uh, yeah. I mean, looking at the curve, your, your two and three are even with each yeah. other. You have 19 yeah. two drops and 19 three drops. That's uh, a little heavy, but I guess vehicles tend to be heavy at three. So. Yeah, it, it does okay. mean well, we that... Can, well, we can trim that down in other categories. Yeah, it, it means yeah. that turn turn four or getting to four mana is going to be your critical turn. Which, yeah. I mean, personally, that's the way that I like building decks is yeah. by turn four, I want to be casting two spells mm -hmm. a turn. And right. uh, it, in this deck, turn four and turn five are going to be your, I'm now casting two spells a turn. Uh, in terms of, okay, let's look at my non-vehicle artifacts. Okay. So that's a relatively small pile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Heirloom Blade is a card I always feel kind of weird about because it doesn't work with vehicles, but it's like a big pump for one mana, and on a dwarf it's really good, and mm -hmm. it gives a lot of power for like a cheap equip. Yes. But I'm not sure about that. I don't uh, know. Uh, Spear of Heliod is something I've thought about, but it's like... Eh, it's also kind of... It's also pricey-ish. It's like almost a dollar, mm -hmm. so... I, I, I don't know if I'm a fan of the non depala anthems in the deck yeah i i think that that's that's venturing into some ground that we could be using for more synergy pieces yeah, as opposed to fair. just uh, that's fair general value pieces that's fair uh what about the heirloom blade what are your thoughts on that so uh heirloom blade being able to I'm gonna ensure i'm going cut the spear at the moment so. okay uh, so Heirloom Blade being able to ensure that even the smallest of your dwarves can crew anything that you have is okay. But the fact that it's three mana and conflicts with a lot of where you want to be casting your vehicles is what yeah. concerns me most. That's fair. That's fair. And I mean, I think I'm getting enough other value from like a lot of the new vehicles. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. I, I we really have added that. in three or four vehicles alone that have... Uh, yeah. Card value. I am going to cut the heirloom blade. Okay, heirloom blade. Save us much money, but uh, the only non-vehicle artifact I was looking at maybe was glittering stockpile, but I don't know. That's just because it's an interesting mana rock, but I don't know that the deck necessarily needs it. 
Uh, honestly, with your curve sitting at two and three heavy, I don't think that you need many rocks. I think that this is okay. a deck that's going to be okay keeping a two land hand. Yeah. Nine right, times out of ten. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, I mean, right now I just have Sol Ring, Arcane Signet, Boros Signet. So. Yep. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think uh, that you need many rocks. Again, uh, if by the ter- time you get to turn three, you've drawn four extra cards, yeah, uh, that's fair. if you haven't hit your third land, you're going to be in trouble yeah. regardless. But that's, once you hit three okay. land, you're going to be able to cast the majority of things in your deck. All right, so let's look at this. I'm happy with the vehicles I have left, so I don't think I need to cut there. Mm-hmm. I don't want to cut either Teshar or Jorkadine, so I'm happy there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think any of the dwarves I'm running have been underperforming. Uh, Plundering Barbarian is kind of middling, but it has some it has some variety to it, and mm-hmm. it is reasonable, so I don't think it's a problem per se. Right. Uh, but plus, Big Side can... Engineer is, is an all-star, though. That's yeah. a sweet card that's come out since we talked before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it, and Plundering Barbarian is one of those, if we put in some of the Bouncer Flicker, vehicles yeah. get we get That's more and more target. value out of yeah yeah indeed okay all right so looking at leaving that aside um let's look at my non-basic lands for a moment sure uh the two i'm interested in putting in are just the two new uh tap duels that have come out recently so the alpine meadow and the sacred peaks mm-hmm. i don't want to cut fury calm snarl because it's not a super cheap land it's like over a dollar mm-hmm and it almost basically a lot of the time it's just the tap land in this deck. So right. Well, I I've got some good news for you budget wise. Uh, we've brought the budget of the deck down by over ten dollars. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> we're, yeah. We're, we're now. Yeah, at... But again, I'd still I'd still rather cut like Fury Calm Snarl for one of these and yeah. spend that on you know a Weatherlight or a Nautiloid or yes. you know. Heck, maybe even dream of an unlicensed hearse if we can. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's looking likely that we can do that at this point. I mean, we've yeah. got, right. uh, I- if we replace right. that land with another one of these new duels, uh, right. we've got $15 right. to play with. So, uh, yeah, I don't suppose uh, these are both probably just like dirt cheap, right? The Alpine Meadow and the Sacred Peaks. Uh, yeah, Alpine Meadow is 30 cents. And the Sacred Peaks is probably less. He- Sacred Peaks is twenty cents, so yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I'll go with that one for now, just to might as well pinch every penny, right? Um, what about? Do you think there's another good cut in the non basics for the Alpine Meadow, or even trimming a basic for it? Do you think that's worthwhile? Um, so it's it's an Enter the Battlefield tapped land. Uh, yeah. And my challenge with the Enter the Battlefield tapped lands is that this is a deck where we're likely going to be keeping a two-land hand. Uh, And if those two lands are ETB tapped lands, that means that we're a turn turn behind. We're playing a turn behind curve. Uh, I would be in favor of cutting some of these ETB tapped lands in favor of basics. But that's just me, okay. and that's my deck building philosophy. Especially when we're looking yeah. at something where oh, well, turn actually, two and turn three are crucial. Yeah, actually, it's probably better to play Needle Spires over just a basic ETB tap duel, right? Because I don't have any. Uh, well, I guess I guess for like Dwergar Hedge Mage, counting mountains and plains is useful. But beyond that, it doesn't make a difference. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I think I'll leave that for now then. Okay. Um, let's see. Where do we want to go? Oh, one card I definitely know I want to include is Born to Drive. Born to Drive. Baby, I was born to drive. Uh, born to Drive. Uh, yeah, this is the aura. Uh, as long as the enchanted yeah. creature is a creature, it gets plus one, plus one for each creature and or vehicle you control. Whew! Uh... And, and then, then the channel ability is amazing as well. Creating two pilots. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Like, early game, I want to channel it. Late game, I want to cast it. Like, Yeah, and putting this on one of your evasive vehicles yeah. uh, and punching in with it, I mean, like, we've added in two or three vehicles that have trample on it and another yeah. two or three that have flying on it. You throw or this menace, on and you can or, be... Yeah. Right. 
He Imagine putting on that on Mighty be... Servant of Liuko. Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, you, you can be punching in for the win in those or instances. Or on the Mech Titan, even. <laughs> yeah, right? That That is magical Christmas land, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, also, um, actually, that's a possibility. Um, I would just like to call out to everyone watching, Ferocity of the Wilds is a disgusting card and should be played more in decks that don't rely on humans. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, attacking non-human creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and have trample. Very important. Okay. Oh, yeah. You were saying maybe cut the non Depala Anthem. So maybe Dictative Heliod can go. So uh, removing Dictative Heliod is interesting because not only does it remove the non Depala Anthems, but it also brings your curve down pretty considerably, too. Because yeah. five okay, mana so is the top end. That for now. Um, I wonder if we should cut Outpost Siege since we're getting better on card advantage. Uh, I think we're getting more synergistic on card advantage, which okay. is is good. But keep in mind, every enchantment that we cut is removing some value out of roadside right. reliquary. That's, that's fair. Okay, yeah. So at this point, I've cut one enchantment and added enchantment, so I'm even on enchantments. That's so correct. Let's maybe leave it for now, then. Mm -hmm. No post siege is still good, and very occasionally the uh, dragon's ability is good, too. Yes, okay. absolutely. Uh, let's see. Where would you like to go next? Uh, so... Um, Let's let's take a look at your instants and sorceries because we're pretty okay. light on those already. Yeah. But I want to uh, get your impression on first? how some of them have played uh, sure. in, in your time uh, playing the deck. Which first, instants or sorceries? Let's take a look at sorceries first. Okay, absolutely. All right. Okay, so uh, sudden demise. Sudden demise is your uh, earthquake for a chosen color. Yeah, it's useful. I mean, obviously, sometimes I have to sudden demise, you know, white or red creatures. But I, in that case, I can also just crew vehicles, then cast it, and then swing in. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. most of my vehicles are colorless. So yeah. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. With it, it's, it's a useful card, and it's not a card that doesn't see a lot of play. Right. So I feel like it's uh, just generally good. Okay. Um. Fiery Confluence. Like, Rip Apart, I'm not going to say anything about Rip Apart. I love Rip Apart. It's great. Yeah. Uh, Fiery Confluence, I think that it's a Fire. great selective little uh, potential yeah. board wipe. It, it's just so flexible, yes. right? Like, it can be a triple shatter. It can be a... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a... It can be yeah. a Pyroclasm as well as damage to opponents. Like, the, the yeah, Confluences, exactly. anything that's modal yeah. like this... Uh, some of my favorite includes. I, I always tell people, the more yeah. choices you have, the better the card is. Um, mm -hmm. Reckless Crew. How about this one? Uh, it's a card I like. I, I want to like. It seems cool, but it's also like... I think I've, I haven't drawn it that often, and it's also just like, you know, the times I have drawn it, I haven't had that many vehicles, and I'm not an equipment deck, mm -hmm. and so maybe it's a good cut. I, I think that it's probably closer to a, a cut than not. I, I can yeah. definitely see it being the best card in the deck to recover from a board wipe. Right? Yeah. Like if, if That's true. Yeah, if your opponents have wiped the board and it's coming back to you and you've got a bunch of vehicles and an empty board, playing Reckless Crew and being able to crew everything that you have is yeah. going to be such a blowout for yeah. somebody who thinks okay. that you have yeah. nothing. I, I think maybe leave it for now then. Um... Yeah. Uh, okay. McKindy Stampede. I, I know it's a weird choice, but I mean, sometimes uh, that pump is good, but maybe, again, maybe it's just not worth the slot. Yeah, I think I think Over five mana for a bad overrun effect Yeah, is... Uh, I would rather replace this with a basic. I mean, I, I yeah. have okay. recently been on a tear about MDFCs and how... Yeah. Uh, don't count them towards your land count. And... That's fair. That's fair. So, I, honestly, I think McKindy Stampede out for either that yeah. Alpine, uh, whichever, or Meadow. Al Alpine yeah. Meadow or a basic. Well, I don't have basics handy right now, so I'll just okay. put the Alpine Meadow okay. for now. And then, yeah, so Dictate and McKindy Stampede. Uh, 
Alpine Meadow. Okay. Uh, and then finally, I think uh, Commander All Star of a card, Austere Command. Yeah. I mean, what else is there to say, right? Yes. It's, it's a great card. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, we, we, we already said what we will about modal cards when it came to Fiery Confluence. I think Austere Command uh, is once again up there. It's exactly what you need to be when you need it to be. Yeah. I mean, if Farewell was budget, I'd probably put Farewell in that slot, but it's not, so... Uh, absolutely uh, crumble. Or I'd run both, but... Yes. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, maybe okay. maybe once it's out of uh, standard rotation. All right. So the two sorceries I had on the consideration pile uh, are Spiteful Repossession and Invoke Justice. Oh, Invoke Justice, I haven't seen an action yet. Um, it seems good, because, I mean, it can put counters on vehicles, and it can just returns any permanent card from my graveyard. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I don't know if the quad white is too harsh. Uh, the the quad white is, is an issue if you didn't have the volume of uh, two-color producing lands that you do right yeah. now. Uh, I think the and honestly, the, like I mostly am going to want this late game anyway, right? So I, yeah. like there, there's also an instance where you want to cast this on four and cheat yeah. out one of your like a Parhelion, for instance, yeah. right? That's if you've if you've done something to say impulsive draw and you've pitched yeah. a Parhelion into yeah. your yard and you're or, or invoking just, Justin's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or even if I just activate Depala and get a bunch of hits and then have to discard something. Exactly, right? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Okay. It's probably worth a try then? Yeah, I, I think so. But, I, I mean, the first game where you have it in hand and you can't cast it because you can't meet that four white requirement is where yeah. you've got to say to yourself, "Should I? is this worth keeping? Should I keep this? Yeah. All right. Uh, spiteful repossession. I've just been on a kick, really liking it because it's a good catch-up card, and it just can nug people to the head, which is good for aggressive decks. Yeah, so it, it deals damage to each opponent who controls more lands than you, equal to the difference. So if somebody's been ramping out of control all game, yeah. this is a great way to say, "Ha ha, sucker." Even, or even if it's just like turn eight and I've missed a couple of land drops, you know, I can yeah. get like six treasures or something. Um, yeah. So I mean, I, it's not as good as it is as in like Torbran, where it you know makes extra damage because extra tokens because of you know the damage increase. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, I I think that it, it's interesting. It's the five mana that turns me off about That's it. Fair. I'll put um, it on the maybe pile then. Yeah, if I wanted We're to punish somebody for ramping out of control i would play yeah. something like acidic soil yeah that's fair and, and again for five mana probably i'd rather just play another vehicle yeah also just also if i'm like adding spells it probably would should add more instance because i'm kind of low on instant speed stuff yeah so i mean we we've removed and added in a sorcery here so let's take a look at your instance next okay okay uh i'm pretty happy with everything we have except mm -hmm. maybe semesters and it's fine um but i don't know it's kind of a flex slot yeah i i think that I wish, it is... I wish there was this sort of effect that could hit like artifacts as well right right uh i i think that this is one of the best budget gotcha spells that yeah. we have access to uh, it, it can't save your vehicles, which is the biggest concern, right? If something like a uh, the uh, ghostly one, the three mana white mm -hmm. uh, ghostly something, uh, if it could hit your your artifacts as well or any permanent, yeah. I think that yeah. that'd be much better. But uh, we, since we lack something like a uh, heroic intervention that can give all of your permanents indestructible. Uh, I think semester, Semester's End is a good uh, why do they have four mana open uh, card. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. Um, okay. But, uh, but all the Wreckage is just amazing. Okay, sorry, yeah. unless you want to keep going on Semester's End. So, so in regards to the instance, uh, this is the kind of deck where we want to be pumping our extra mana into something like Depala and Depaula's yeah. activations. So the chances that we're going to have mana open to cast things on other people's turns is right, going to Depaula be... Isn't, Depaula isn't sorcery speed, right? So you can always just keep up 
Uh, you can always just, like, end of an op opponent's turn, tap to Paula to crew something if you ha didn't need to crew or to attack, and fair. then spend your leftover mana, right? That's right. very fair. That's very fair. Okay, okay. I, uh, I think that that's a fantastic interaction. Good point. Uh, and chat um, uh, is saying uh, Ghostway and Eerie Interlude. Thank you, Muffins. Yeah. You are always right there for my poor memory. Do those get artifacts? No. They don't. They're uh, Eerie Interlude Ghostway is just get... creature. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just trying to see if there's been anything. Now, Eerie Interlude is just any number of target creatures, so you could do something like crew your vehicles, then Eerie Interlude. To blink yeah, them all out, but you can do the same with Semester's End. Still not super. Um, and Eerie Interlude is two dollars. I think we've got plenty of room in the budget, but three mana versus four mana. This one, your Semester's End, gives you additional oh, plus one plus one counters. Oh, 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 that's a card I had not considered, but it might be worth running in terms of sorcery. Oh no, actually it's just creatures. Never mind. I was looking at Ascend from Avernus, but it's only creatures and doesn't hit artifacts. It hit artifacts. Oh yeah. It, boy. It'd be real good. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I mean, apart from that, I think your instants are great utility. Wear, tear, crush, contraband, yeah. Uh, yeah. settle the wreckage. Uh, I, I wouldn't yeah. touch those. I think that those are fantastic yeah. in our format, regardless yeah. of whether we're playing at budget or not. Wear, tear, I'm surprised at the price on. Right, right. Considering it's even sees play at the higher end of the spectrum in terms of power level, yeah. Uh, it, I, I think wear tear is really good, and more people should be yeah. playing it. Even oh, though I know a lot of people cheaper in uh, U.S. dollars than it is in euro. Okay, in euro, it's almost like a euro or more. So. Oh, and it's uh, about forty cents in dollars. Yeah. So. All right. Cool. But yeah, blacksmith skill is super great too. One hundred percent. Love it. Um. Yeah. Okay, so let me let me go through the pile I'm considering then. Okay. Uh, Armed and Armored is a fun card. Again, I'm lacking the equipment. Uh, yeah, I, I had this in a, a recent deck too. Uh, I, I had this in my um, Grease Fang vehicle deck, yeah. Armed and Armored. I didn't have any dwarves, I didn't have any equipment. Just vehicles you control become yeah. crude until end of turn is fantastic for two mana. It's it's a nice little surprise. It's like, oh, you board wipe? Sure. I'll just, like, trundle in at the person who cast the board wipe. Exactly, exactly. Uh, hey, right. you've cleared the way for me. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, so... I, I, I think me... that it's a good include, honestly. Okay. Yeah, we'll try it anyway. Uh, okay. Here's a card that I actually only became aware of recently. Raise the effigy. I think that's a it's a very flexible card. Uh, I saw this one recently too. Um, this one I included in my update to my Zatahedron grinder deck yeah. because target attacking creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn. But it is uh, again one of those modal cards that we talked about where it can be. Uh, yeah. One mana artifact destruction. Yeah. I just, I just, you know, how how far we've come when like uh, smelt, you know, yeah, right? Gets an upgrade and no one talks about it, right? Exactly, exactly. Uh, and I mean, this is two thirds of a giant growth in a lot of instances, yeah. and uh, yeah. I think yeah. that it it's great. It, I I think that it's a good gotcha. I think that it's good utility. I don't know yeah. if it's necessary in the deck. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of my instants are already hitting artifacts and enchantments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And stuff. I, yeah. Uh, in terms of a more versatile removal spell, we have Wild Magic Surge, which is just fun. Wild Magic I mean, it's, Surge. It's basically a yeah. Chaos Warp at home, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, unfortunately, two dollars right now too. Oh, is it? Yeah. Jeez, I didn't realize it was that high. All right, that's probably a no then. Well, I mean, like we've got room in the budget. Don't don't okay, let that dissuade yeah. you. Okay, I'll put that in the maybe pile then. Okay. Um, yeah. All right, and then the final one I had is mind collapse. Mind collapse. Uh, this is deals damage equal to a number of our uh, mountains. Sacrifice a mountain rather than pay a spell. Uh, five damage to target creature or planeswalker. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily good, but. It's, it seems like a good budget removal spell, so... Yeah. was, you know, a question mark. Yeah. 
I think it's it's perfectly fine as a uh, a removal spell, and it's one of those uh, spells that you, you can cast if you're tapped out too. Yeah. Uh, as a as a gotcha, if it's like, hey, you're tapped out, I'll attack you with this. Uh, yeah. You know, All right. infect All right. creature. I'll put that on the maybe pile then. Um, okay, so that's actually it for new cards I was considering. Um, pile we haven't talked about yet is planeswalkers. Okay. I have Nihiri the Harbinger and Duretti Scrap Savant. Duretti I love. I don't think I ever want to cut him. No, right. it's a great way to rebuy your vehicles, yeah. too. And, uh, just, and just to get stuff back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, and just you, to, like, get cards. Card you, flow is always good. You Nihiri, can on the other hand, I'm not so sure about. I added her originally because she was just reasonable, but, like, it feels like I've gotten a lot more removal and whatnot right yeah uh well again the plus two to discard a card and draw a card uh yeah i I mean we've got so much better card draw on the vehicles that we've put in already exactly yeah and then like the removal is fine but i mean i might as well just replace her with a removal spell exactly the minus eight okay i think she's a cut then okay okay i'm i'm for it i've got no qualms with that either uh don't think there's any new planeswalkers that would be great for this deck uh talon sword in chat says where's mana tithe for a cheeky gotcha counter spell <laughs> uh, not really what I to do. yeah n- not the vibe that we're going for but i appreciate it i love a good mana tithe <laughs> yeah uh, let me just double check planeswalkers mm-hmm mm-hmm yeah, I don't. I, again, I don't think planeswalkers are necessary. Um, no, no, I know. I'm just looking to see what there is. If there's anything, um, yeah, if there's anything good. Yeah, uh, because because remember that planeswalkers are going to conflict with you casting another vehicle. For oh instance, yeah, I know. So. I'm just again, I'm just double checking to make sure I wasn't missing. Perfectly fine. No, I don't think there's anything new, really. No. No, not from a planeswalker standpoint. There's the there's Cosmo, the the dog Comet? planeswalker. Yeah, the Comet. Comet's cute. But... <laughs> Uh, Comet Stellar Pup. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't think he really does anything that the deck wants to be doing. No, but... he's. But he's a good boy. <laughs> yeah, he, he is the goodest of boys. <laughs> All right. yeah. Um. Oh, actually, there was that. Um. <clears throat> what? There's this price on this. Not so, uh, from from um, my viewpoint, we're looking at ninety eight cards, and we're at about thirty five dollars. Yeah. Uh, question for you: hmm. What do you think possibly about uh, Mila slash Luca as a possibility for the deck? So I uh, had seen that. Uh, let's see. So I had about a dollar, which isn't bad. Yeah, for for a planeswalker, it's pretty all right. Um, whenever an opponent attacks one or more planeswalkers you control put a loyalty counter on each planeswalker you control that does nothing for us whenever a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability and opponent controls you may draw a card that's that's, fine. that's fine but I mean you're you're not going to be casting it on the front side right you're going to be casting it yeah, not for Luka. often but yeah uh, mm-hmm. uh, and Luca is 6 mana for 5 loyalty uh, I don't think it, I don't think it's worth it, but it's always you know worth considering. Certainly, since I feel like this card was kind of overlooked. Before. I, I agree. Uh, I got my butt kicked by it in Vegas. Uh, the Judge Kyle uh, played in a game, and he he played his uh, Mardu Super Friends deck. And I think for six mana, I want something else. Luca was. Uh, an absolute terror in that game. Uh, nice. Comet is one of the commander legal cards. Yes, uh, Comet has the oval uh, hollow stamp on it. Okay, so moving away from planeswalkers, that's all the extra cards. Is there anything we haven't like 
brought up that you had in mind, possibly? No, I, I, we, we touched on a lot of the possibilities, and we brought up a lot of the new cards that I wanted to. I think that we were on the same page uh, with a, a lot of them, and we've got two spots right now, so we can add in Unlicensed Hearse and Nautiloid Ship, which are which were your, uh, you know, yeah. Kennedy Fit I have fit three, bumps. but I also don't have the Balladeer in, so right. yeah. Um, all right, yeah, so... We have a lot of value, but like I don't know, is hearse hearse is good, but like I don't know, I don't it feels weird having a card worth that much in a budget deck, you know? I absolutely, uh, I get that, I totally understand that. Um, it, the other option is um, that spot can be dedicated to one of the blink vehicles that we mm. talked about, and we can play yeah. around with that interaction. You can see how that feels. Or, in game. Yeah. Okay, uh, so what is, and what about Weatherlight Completed? Uh, I have, oh. uh, I have not put Weatherlight Completed in the list, so. Yeah. So we could do Nautiloid Ship and we Weatherlight Completed. Yeah. And what does that bring us up to? That, uh, brings us up to, uh, 100 cards, and... Weather like completed, uh, and that brings us up to forty four dollars. Okay, um, I'm still kind of iffy about the balladeer. It seems really good, but like it seems fine, but it's also like eh, I'm actually wondering if something worse than the balladeer. Do we want to maybe cut? What do you think about cutting um, thundering barbarian for the balladeer? And then uh, also adding in something else. Yeah, uh, I plundering, uh, plundering barbarian and insufferable balladeer are same, same but different to me. Like they're yeah. they're yeah, on I the same. I think I like plane. the effect on the balladeer better, and it's also just cheaper. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's cut plundering barbarian and replace okay. it with something else. Uh, I, I would say at this point we've got 23 creatures after removing the Barbarian and 21 artifacts. So one more vehicle okay. would so be a good balance. Let's look at our maybe pile here. We have these. So we have Mysterious Limousine, uh, Getaway Car, and High Speed Hover Bike as the ones that I had in the maybe pile. Yeah. Um... Then there was also the Golden Argosy, uh, the Unlicensed Hearse, which we're priced out of at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, Golden Argosy and thing. the Getaway Car, we've just removed one of our Synergy pieces for. Yeah. So uh, I don't know fair. if it makes sense to um, add them. Yeah. Uh, what about... Okay, is there any one that we want to add back from what we've cut then? Um, out of the old uh, out of the old cut. vehicles uh, what, which Museum, vehicle Museum Tank is actually kind of a cool card Okay. I don't know what do you think of Museum Tank so Museum... like a lot of the time we cast a vehicle and it proves itself right like right. and it tramples which is good yeah um, we don't have a lot of instants and sorceries to do anything with it, but we've got a high concentration of artifacts. Yeah, um, I mean, it just needs to be non-creature, right? Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I think I think that it's it's fine. I think that it's another. Uh, hey, if we've okay. been board wiped, yeah. it's something that crews itself if we don't have any creatures. Yeah. All right, but do you like that better than the high speed hover bike? Uh, so let's pull up high speed hover bike. High speed hover bike. Uh, two mana, flash, flying, tap a creature, crew one. So I like that it's evasive. That's that's yeah. the, the big thing for me. And the fact that it can be potentially a gotcha as well, mm -hmm. like a temporary removal effect. Yeah. Um, I like high-speed hover bike a little bit more. Yeah, that's fair. Um, trying to double-check if there's... Thing else that maybe I wasn't thinking of. Alternately, we could just add another land, right? Uh, 
So, I mean, we we have technically added another land. We removed the McKinney Stampede and put in Alpine right. Meadow. So we're up to 34 lands, 35 including mm -hmm. the MDFC, which I think is fine because we've brought our curve down by yeah. almost a whole point. We're sitting just below three mana value on average right now. Mm. So I, th I think our land count is perfectly fine. So I've added in high-speed hover bike to fill out our 100 here. We've got 23 creatures and 22 artifacts. Perfect balance, in my opinion. Yeah, perfectly balanced as all. Things. As all things should be. Yes, absolutely. Um, check. Sorry, I'm just like trying to think if there's anything else. No problem. Oh, here, I found my extra basics for this deck. Did we want to? Maybe, what, what did I have lower? I want to maybe bring up the mountain count again instead of the... So, uh, my my call here would be let's ditch Boros Garrison in mm. favor of a mountain. Okay, so you like keeping the tap duels over the... Yeah, over the, the bounce land here. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah I, don't... I guess I don't really need that much extra mana. I have a pretty tight curve, so yep. Yeah, I... okay, that's fair. But 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 then I have to cut my nice original Ravnica foil Boros scarce. <laughs> oh, well. uh, I'll find hey, another home for it. Your it's your deck. You can you can keep it if you like. Uh, but but we we have so many tapped duels in here. Yeah. Um. I I think basically the best hand you want to keep well, in this deck is a tapped duel and a basic land. If, okay, do we want to cut some of the other tap duels then? Since I found my basics. Uh, so, let's see. Um, and also, where did my cut pile go? Losing track of cards We've here. got... Uh, I'm just going to do a quick count. One, two, three, uh, four, five, uh, no, I think six. So we've got six tap duels in here and a couple of other yeah. colorless producing non-basics yeah. that are that come into play tapped. So uh, if, if we're looking to cut some of the tapped duels... Uh, I think Needle Spires is not particularly great. I, I would say Needle Spires uh, as well as... Um, Borhold Campus? I, don't oh, know. I, I was going to say Russville Bridge, but it is an artifact land. Yeah. Uh, Though I don't have that much stuff that co that counts artifacts, right? Uh, it's Jorkadine's Metalcraft is the oh, one instance that's I could true. think of. That is true. Um, let's see here. Because Jor Jorkadine with Ancient Den, Great Furnace, and Rustville Bridge out is <laughs> Metalcraft yeah. enabled with an empty board. Yeah. Right? All right. So we could cut Neil Spires. I mean, we can cut the new Cap Duels. I played um do you think castle embreath is worth it worth it over just a mountain um so any anything that's got an effect that we could use if we're empty-handed yeah. i typically like to include however castle embreath is if you're empty-handed but have a board presence it's good yeah yeah um oh another thing i just thought of i don't know where it is right now but when I was doing the updates last time, I cut, uh, what is it, unclaimed territory for the uh, secluded courtyard. I guess I could mm -hmm. put unclaimed territory back in since we have the budget. Yeah. Um, if I can find where I put it. but uh, Let's see. It's I'm somewhere, gonna... but I can just make that note. Uh, needle Spires. Uh... So unclaimed territory and secluded courtyard do basically the same thing, except uh, secluded courtyard uh, are they exactly the same? A well, secluded courtyard lets you add mana of any color to activate abilities, where unclaimed territory yeah. is just to cast spells. Yeah, but I don't really have activated abilities, so they're based. They're functionally the same. Yeah, I think it was just secluded courtyard was cheaper. So. So, uh, I, again, we, we don't have a lot of stuff outside of Invoke Justice that is color-heavy. Nothing yeah. else in the list requires more than two colors. So I would say scaling back on some of these non-basic lands in place yeah. of basics 
would okay. help the tempo yeah. of the deck. Okay, so needle spires. Um, do I really even need evolving wilds? Uh, honestly, probably not. Uh, I yeah. I would say, uh, castle embereth evolving wilds. Uh, needle spires. Myriad landscape needle spires and secluded courtyard. That's five lands. Could all go in place basics. Cut secluded courtyard. Okay. okay uh, so. I guess that's not the worst idea. What about Lorehold Campus? I don't uh, know. That for the four mana scry seems a little awkward. Hey, hey, if you're on the fence about it, we can cut it. Yeah, I think I'd probably rather cut that over the courtyard. Okay. All right. Just yeah. Okay. So I have four cards here. So. Yep. I have Lorehold Campus, Myriad Landscape. That so just two more of each, I guess. Yep, I think that that makes a lot of sense. Uh, our color balance is a little bit skewing heavier towards white than it is red. Okay. Uh, well, so I think right now we're on even basics. Is that right? That's correct. We're eight and eight right now. So if we do three planes, Are we one eight, mountain. Eight. Yeah, Where is there another land we can cut for another plane? Um, and I still have an empty slot. Probably Battlefield Forge. I don't feel like that's super necessary pain, like for the pain. Probably not. Right. We don't have a lot of life gain in the deck. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we'll cut that for a planes then. All right. All right. Okay. Cool. Fantastic. Also, I, I I was super happy when New Capenna came out because now I can actually have like vehicle lands for my vehicle deck. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. Get to play these lovely things, both of which feature trains. Although I think I actually cut all the real trains from the deck. <laughs> that, that is true. Some of the first cuts we made were for the, the actual trains in the deck. Yeah. But hey, at least we're on theme. So yeah. so we're at a hundred cards. We're well under yeah, budget. Uh, I still so. have one. I still have one slot. Oh, you put it in the hover bike. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we can try that. We're at 42. 42.83. Nice. Not bad at all. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that seems Excellent. good to me. Um, oh, yeah. And since we are... Let me also just make sure that my count is good here. All right. And while, while you're doing that, uh, I, I want to thank everybody in chat who's come out and watch. Uh, I'm going to do my little sponsor spiel right now before we say goodbye to everybody. So I do want to thank my sponsors who make this stream and all my streams possible. Harry Tarantula for all your singles and all of your uh, cards. If you do want to pre-order the Warhammer 40k pre-cons, Harry T is doing that. Head on over there and use my promo code CMDR5 if it is your first time ordering from them for 5% off your order, uh, which is huge if you're ordering any of these pre-cons. Uh, otherwise, use CMDR Mechanic to help support the channel. Uh, our friends at Quiver for the best card carrying products uh, between covers, uh, boxes, uh, deck boxes, sleeves, and of course their namesake, the Quiver card carrying case, the best. Uh, there's altar sleeves for all of the custom bling for your decks if you want to cover up art from shitty artists or if you want to make your deck your own with some fancy sleeves head on over there once again use my promo code CMDR mechanic and of course Moxfield the best deck building platform in the world without whom we wouldn't be able to do any of this as you can see up on screen i use them very very heavily in everything that i do head on over to my profile check me out follow me while you're there and you'll be able to see some of the lists like the ones that we worked on today uh and with that charlotte thank you for hanging out really you. really appreciate uh the, yeah. this good time that we get to hang out and uh talk magic together yeah don't do it enough Right, exactly, exactly. Uh, for for everybody who's out there, why don't you remind them who you are and where they can find you? Yeah, I am Charlotte Sable, member of the Commander Advisory Group, Level 3 Magic Judge, uh, occasional writer at CommandersHerald.com, former writer of the Magic Judge Tumblr. Um, 
yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Jackal Girl, which is JQO Girl. Uh, I tweet about random stuff infrequently, um, but I was happy to talk to folks about magic and the like. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Well, thank you, my friend. It's uh, it's always a pleasure. Thank you, everybody yeah. out there. Uh, if you missed this and you're just joining in, the VOD's going to go up in a couple of days here on the channel, too. Uh, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And we'll talk to you all later. Uh, as Bye. always, from me, good luck and have fun.